We're back with Ron Carson and Irv Rosenzweig. Well, we want to start the conversation about one of the things you mentioned was explosive growth. So what I want to talk about is, I mentioned earlier, uh, our business owners are talking about this is going to, they expect it to be a good year, but you're both having good years. And I know you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're having explosive growth. What's the metric that drives that growth for you? I mean, maybe you're not just measuring one thing, but you know, is it stakeholders? Is it assets? But what, what's, what's growth to you? Yeah, it's a tricky question because, yeah. you know, as I, as I give this, I realize that people that use our services are going to probably watch this. And you, you know, a lot of times you want to say profitability. I just came out with a new book called The Sustainable Edge. And in it, I talk about the fact that you have to have a metric that you want to measure is that you have a responsible margin uh, for your business. And you're thinking, well, this is a totally different answer than what I thought. Because it is. But the, where I'm going with this is I've seen businesses that have too high a margin. If your business, if your margin is too high, that tells me one of two things. You're not taking care of your internal stakeholders or you're charging the consumer too much. Okay. If your margin is too skinny, that's equally as bad because you're not charging your consumer enough and if you're not, don't have a responsible margin, you can't reinvest in your internal stakeholders because ultimately they serve our clients yep. and you can't withstand a downturn so you can stay in business for the benefit of your clients. And so it's a, it's a, it's a very fine line that we continue to walk to say, we're, Irv and I are committed to the consumer. We're committed to putting the client's interests first, always. Everybody says it. Not all companies always can really truly demonstrate that they're doing that. But part of that that they don't see is this tightrope, constant battle between reinvesting back in the business, having a responsible margin, giving the most value possible for the, it's really an investment, not a fee that we're asking people to make because they expect to get a return on that investment that they're making. And so it's not as simple as one metric. There's a lot of moving metrics that you have to be, you have to juggle as, as a CEO. You know, what's your culture internally? Are people giving you discretionary of it? Are they giving it their all when it's not convenient for them to do so? Are you reinvesting back in the next generation of technology? Do you have adequate research and capabilities so you can deliver what you believe is gonna be the best in class solutions for the clients. And so it's a, it's, it's a lot of balls in the air all the time. And I wish it was as simple as one thing, but it just isn't anymore. Okay, well, it doesn't have to be. And that, that may work, walk right into how you see yourself. So I know how big your practice, you know, I know how much you've grown over the years, the 10 years I've known you. So do you see, do you see growth the same way or do you, do you look at it somewhat differently? I'm trying to get the balance part right, to be honest with you. you mean I mean, the life I, balance or the growth balance? Well, a little bit of both. I mean, I mean, there, there's the commitments there. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand our responsibility to the client. I understand their reliance on us, their trust in us. And I, and I feel that I'm totally up to the job in that regard. But now, especially with this alliance with Ron, um, my obligation to the client is not to burn out. My obligation to the client is to make sure that there's not a big drop for a continuity plan if god forbid something happens to me or if i need to pull back a little bit so i can you know awaken my senses or whatever it's going to take so i am working on some things related to that but along with that comes that desire to learn more desire to do better i mean it it it, it kind of recharges your your battery a bit in that regard so from my perspective Certainly getting back to what I did best, which was meeting with the client, you know, you know, having conversations with the client, you know, knowing what I had to do, my obligation to the client, which I always knew, but it, it might have been a little bit distorted because it was not me meeting with that client in many instances. So getting back to that, as well as the fact that, uh, you know, we are, we are seeing growth um, through uh, acquiring 401k plans and things of that nature, where you begin to work through through the plan itself and work with the executives, you work with the participants. There's a number of things that channel that level of growth. So it's it's it's, it's exciting in that way. You know, you said something, Herb, and, and I've known Herb now for for a few years. The thing that has always struck me about Herb is he 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 goes hard all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I know you don't take a lot of vacations, not a lot of personal time. And one of the things that I advice I give to CEOs, other business owners, is to be the most selfless, you have to first be selfish. I think you're figuring that out. If you don't take care of yourself, 
you're not going to be there for all the people that are depending upon you. And we have a philosophy at the Carson Group and with all of our partners is balance leads to growth, growth leads to balance. And it's a positive, virtuous cycle because you can only go any anything can only go 100 percent all the time. And that's really what this partnership allows us to do, it allows Herb to take a lot of the pressure off. Let us think about you know, the technology, let us help you evolve the client experience, let us integrate with, you know, the great research and capabilities you already have to take a lot of that pressure off. So Irv, where we add value is really out there providing leadership growth, mentoring our team and interacting with our clients to get constant feedback as to how can we better serve them. So when you're looking for a partner, when you're looking for a stakeholder, you're looking for somebody like Irvin Office, what's a good fit for you? How do you know it's a good fit? It's, you know, when you see it. So we start with culture first and we love to say culture eats strategy for lunch. You're going to have everything else be perfect. If you don't have the right cultural fit, then it doesn't work. Um, and after culture, it's like you'd be able to be able to look somebody in the eye and say, would I trust this person to handle my money and my wealth? What litmus test we ask other advisors is, you have a good business, I have a great business. Okay, here's a question. If you were to die tonight, the people, the process, the way you do business, is that who you entrust you to handle your family's wealth with you not there? And a lot of advisors say, no, not if I'm not there. Well, then you don't really have a business that can succeed you and really take care of your clients the way you want to take care of them if you're not there. We're able to say that we have 52 partners around the country. Um, we could be 150 if we didn't care so much about those first two qualities, culture, would I trust my money to this person? Because uh, we, want, we want people to give it their all, all the time, and constantly ask this question. What's in my best, best interest of my client and work backwards from there? Because if you always start with that, a lot of answers become easy and clear and our, none of our partners ever fight us on it. Because sometimes it does, it's not what's in our best interest at all. Uh, but if we always start with that first, we're alignment in our thinking. And nerve? I mean, so obviously you spent a lot of time thinking about is Carson a good fit? What makes Carson a great fit for RZ Wealth? Since that time in conferences and things like that, I've met his people, um, have heard Ron speak at, at different things. And um, I, guess, I guess the question that he asked the advisors uh, is a question that I asked myself in regard to Ron. Would I trust my family with Ron's capabilities and with Ron's group as far as being able to be successful in their money management and things like that? And, and that is the case. And, and getting to meet his people that are, that are, who are very driven and very dedicated, that says a lot about a leader as well, when you're, when you're meeting the people. Also having the bravery or the courage to having his clients serve as almost like a board of directors in his firm is a big deal. I mean, getting that direct feedback from the client, which kind of run a fall of compliance is a risk to take, you know, in that regard, because at any given moment, you can get a complaint from a client, you know, through that board of directors. So that was pretty compelling to me. It, was, it took a lot of courage. It also indicated that somebody was brave enough to let their hair down and allow the, allow the clients to, to give them more direction about how the company should be run. You know, meeting people like Ron, speaking to people like Ron, Mark Chaikin, these are some of the best in the business. I mean, Ron's done, I think, New York Stock Exchange. I've done the New York Stock Exchange with Dennis Gartman, John Nigerian, Steve, Steven Sears of Barons. These are really, really smart people. And just having, having you know, the ability to get into that caliber and, and kind of backfill my firm immediately with these resources was a huge deal for me. Because again, I really did not feel comfortable about the continuity relative to how we would be able to convey quality, drive, expertise, knowledge to our customers and to the families of our customers. And so your Carson delivers all that support and, and, and breadth of service and talent to RZ Wealth. And, and obviously an event like this today where you can see how much your clients, how much they really matter, to you, how much they, you matter to them. You can tell a great advisor by going to one event yeah. and just seeing the care and the love that they have yeah, they, for, for Irv. And it's, and it's, we knew that, but being able to come out here and see it tonight, it's been, been really, really great. So we'll end with, we'll end with this because you're the, you're the national builder. You're the, you're the big dog in the room. What's, what's, what's gonna excite you this in 2018? What are you looking at and say, you know what, this is gonna be really cool. I mean, the, the way we can really drive the client experience um, through some of the new technologies that are coming. And I think a lot of people go, yeah, technology is okay. And I, and I love the convenience of it, but 
there's going to be there's stuff that's emerging that is going to give the client uh, make the complex simple. I mean, ultimately, that's what we all want is take something that's normally complex, make it simple. Um, the degree that the client's going to be able to measure what they're really getting from their relationship. Unfortunately, our financial services and Wall Street is full of conflict still. It's still full of people charging a fee and not adding value, not putting anything back. And there's going to be technologies that are going to emerge. It's going to really illustrate. Time is either going to promote or expose the future. So I'd ask anybody thinking about, you know, really almost any product or service is pay attention because you're going to really be able to separate um, the pretenders from those that are adding value. That's great. And I want to thank you both for sitting down with us. And, and this will be another issue of Main Street CEO. And check us out online. Read up more about what's going on with Carson Group and RZ Wealth. Thank you very much. Thank you.